Hi everyone, I'm Jody Barrows with The Square in a Square, and I have been making quilts for over 30 years with this amazing system. And everything we do starts out just like this, with a square in the middle and strips on the side. And then the different ways you trim it up with your square in a square tool, you're going to get different triangle units. Now we have started working on what we call the option overview book. And the options are the different triangle units that you get from starting out just like this. In this video, we're going to be doing option 16. Now, if you're not caught up with this and you haven't seen the other options of options one through 15, then you'll want to go back and look for those videos that are the option overview book. So what we do is we show you the option and how to do the trimming of it. And then we show you some quilts where we've used the option. And then we're going to show you the reference book. This is volume one of the square and a square system. And this has the options one through 17 in it. Today we're working on option 16, the twist. So let's look down here at our table. And let's just kind of look at our option overview book. I always suggest uh, when we're doing the option overview is that you get a notebook and then as you make your options, your triangle units, which is a great way to learn the system, then you can make your little pages, put them inside the plastic folders and you can start working on your book. So let's just do a quick preview. We started out with our basic square in a square and we uh, just started working on our options. We started out with about 15 basic squares, and then we started trimming those and started making all of our options that go in the book. And we have done the options one through 15, which include the flying geese, the half square triangles, and just a lot of beautiful, beautiful options. And now we're ready to work on option 16, the twist. So I'm gonna set my book aside and we're going to start looking at what we do to do our trimming. So everything we do starts out like this with a square in the middle and strips on the side. Then we're going to put our ruler on here to trim it up. And with the option 16, the twist, I want you to see what happens. So you can use your um, large square and square ruler, the, the original one that you see here, or you can use your small one, um, the mini. Now on your um, square and a square ruler, you have the 120 degrees on two locations. You have the 60 that we use most of the time and you have the 60. Now up until this point, we have not used the 60 in any of our option overviews. So let's look at putting the 90 on here. So normally we're going to put the 90 right into the corner of that square the black lines go right over the seam, your grid line right through the point. And when you trim it up, see how you get that perfect fourth of an inch seam allowance. And that's normally with the square, normally you always work with the 90. But today we're going to work with the 60. So I'm gonna bring this over here and I'm just gonna lay it on this white part of the square for just a minute so that you can look at the ruler and the different lines on here. So obviously, when we put the tip of that 60 into the tip or the corner of the square, these 60 lines are not going to line up over the seam like the 90 did, because a square is the 90, it's not the 60. So when you get ready to do option 16, the twist, it doesn't matter if you go to the right side or if you go to the left. But once you choose a team or a side, you have to stick with that side. Now, as we go around and we start trimming our units and looking at it, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about on keeping it on the same side. So just like we put the 90 in the tip to trim it up, now we're going to put the 60. So here's your 60 right in the tip and look how you have your fourth of an inch and your line is going to go down over your seam. You don't have one over here because we're using the 60. But you can look and see if you have some grid lines going through the tip and that helps to keep your block square as you go around. Now obviously I can't turn this and use my 60 because I've lost that little bit of fabric when I was showing you how to use the 90. So let's grab another one and let's start this again. So here's the 60. We're going to push it right into the tip or the corner of that fabric square. Your line is going to go right over the seam. 
You have a grid line that goes right through the point that helps keep the unit square. Hand flat, make your trim. So I chose to use the right side of my 60. So that means as I go around and trim, I have to continue to use the right side of the 60. So here's the tip right in the corner, right down the seam. And now that I have started cutting, it's important that you keep the outside edge where you've started cutting. You have to keep it nice and square with your grid lines. So make sure you have the fourth of an inch. Make sure it's staying square, hand flat. Always learn to try to cut with your hand flat. Don't cut like a spider. And we're just going to keep turning. Now it doesn't matter if you turn the block to the left or the right. What's important is that you stick with that side. Stick with the team that you chose to start with. And you'll see when we get this last cut how we've started to get the block to twist. Okay, so instead of having a normal square in a square with normal triangle units on the corner, you can see how we have these long slender triangle units and you can see the movement of how the block starts to twist. Now with just like our option two, when we sew strips on the side again and trim it up, your block just continues to grow. So let's look and see what happens when we go around it again. So here you can see how we put black on two sides, red on two sides. So you just sew around it again. And you always know where to put the color because you want the long side to be the same color. See how you have the long side and you're sewing that same color to that long side of your triangle unit. See here is the long side and you have the same color, the long side and the same color. So that's important to do to keep your color consistent. Now you'll see in some of the quilts I'm going to show in a little while that we did a couple of different things with our color, but to follow through with the process of what we're doing, then, um, we're going to, to keep the color like this with the same color on opposite sides. So <clears throat> start out with your basic square, trim it, sew around it again, and now we're going to trim again. So you have to continue to keep that same right side. If you started with the right side, you've got to keep going. Now, if you decided that you wanted to trim this one with the left side, you're going to get kind of a jog, 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 jog. And uh, it would be kind of cool for um, a crazy quilt. And I, ha I actually have not sewn one together like that, but it's uh, definitely piquing my interest to, um, to do so. So the 60 goes right in the tip, line it up right down the seam, and you've got to keep your block square where you've already started cutting. Now remember, each time you sew around, you're adding more a human element we call PPMs, our personal private measurements. Every time you cut, every time you sew, every time you press, you're adding another human element. So the more you go around, the more your block can get off. So it's important to keep it square on the outside. And with every turn, I'm just repeating the same thing, 60 in the tip, down the seam, and keep it square, keep it square out here where you've already cut. So I want to try to balance it out so that it's as square as possible on all of the sides. So now let's look and see what it's doing. Do you see how it is starting to twist and turn and go this direction? So see how each triangle unit continues that turn. And because I use the right side, I'm getting the clockwise turn. If I'd use the left side of the 60, I would get the counterclockwise turn of my block. So when you're designing your quilt, remember that. So this is one time around, two times around. So let's put that one over here. We're going to sew around it again. So see, I continue. My strips have to get wider. And of course, they get longer because my square is growing. And this is the third time around. And you just always trim exactly the same way. Keep the um, same side. Now these pieces are getting large. Save those. And see that shape's not that much different than here. So you could sew that onto another square and just keep using your scraps.
those little ones I'm not going to mess with. And if they are large enough that I'm keeping them, I like to trim them up and stack them up so that they're easily stored until I'm ready to come back to them. Quilting is all about using your scraps. Okay, so that's the last time around from my sample that I'm going to show you. I think you get the hang of it. Use your 60. Stay consistent with whichever side you choose. Keep your colors where the long side is and just keep going. This is almost like a... Um, um, like a swirl or like you're going deep down into a tunnel. Now in this next quilt I want to show you with this is we did a, a little bit different with our colors. So instead of, and then I would just put these in the pages in my book and label it and then I would have my sample ready to go. So let's look at this first one here. This one is um, really a fun one to do. We just chose a novelty print, a cute little rabbit, and quickly made a nice little baby blanket. So here's our square in the middle, and I've kind of cut these out here so that you can see. So here's our square in the middle. We used uh, two different colors, but we put them on opposite sides, and then we used the same color as our square to go on the opposite, and you can really see that swirl uh, with this three color combination. So let's lay down here and you can see. So here was my square in the middle, a blue strip, a red strip, the same as the center strip. And then you can see how I put the 90 in the corner and kept that going. Now I'm pretty consistent with using the um, right side of the, the 60, but it really doesn't matter. So there's one row around. And then here you can see the two rows around. See how it starts to, to spin and go around. Now another cool thing is that you can put anything in the middle. If you put a four patch in here, what would happen if you had the blue color here or here? How would it make it make it spin? I would suggest that you would put the blue color here where the wide side of the triangle is and the red color here and then just use the rest of those as your background. And it would like your blue would start here and just start to swirl. Your red would start here and it just starts to swirl going around. And then of course we did uh, three on this one and just made the square. Then we used a sashing and a cornerstone. And I want you to notice, I want you to notice this nice, let me open it up a little bit larger. Look at this great little star you got with just kind of a, a swirly effect to it. Also, this looks kind of like a whale tail. So you might want to incorporate this somehow in a design. Somebody I noticed on Facebook was talking about making a whale tail and this is a great uh, whale tail shape. And of course, you can just keep sewing around and just keep this growing as, as many times as you want. Also, with the snail's tail design, instead of using the 90 for your snail's tails, let me look in here and see if we have the pink snail tail in here. We do. Okay, so with this one, we did the four patch in the middle. And we sew around it one time using the 90 and see how you get the traditional triangle unit and then sewing again. But if you put the um, four patch in here and did the option 60, then you would really get a real fun looking, very curly um, snail's tail. And I'm going to show you that um, in a few minutes with a storm at sea pattern and just how curly this star shape can get. So a quick, fun little baby blanket with just sashing and a cornerstone. And then look at the interaction over here where you have the, the off sides coming together. This is just really kind of a fun shape right here too when you look at this as one big block. This one was called Rabbit Twister. Now in this one, this one is uh, from... Um, an old scrappy star book.
And on this one, we used the star. And the star was our square in the middle. And we put our strips, just scrappy, on the side and trimmed it up. And then just did block after block after block. Look at this cool little sailboat shape. And see how the sailboat is up and then down. Really could do some nice creative things with fabric and, and colors on it. And just a really fun uh, one to do with the star. You can go um, in your reference book. You can go to, um, I think it's page 69 in your reference book. Let's look and see if I'm correct. Yeah, you can go to page 69 in your reference book and it's going to have this star and it'll have your pattern for you to help you and then it will have a lot of different sizes here for you to make this star any size that you want. And then whenever you get your star, um, whatever you have in the center, let's say this is six inches, divide it in half for three and add a half an inch, three and a half. And so you know how wide you can make your strips out here, um, anywhere from three to three and a half inches. You can always play with it and make sure that you have the right size. But you do also in the front of your reference book have your charts. And so for your option 16, it's going to give you information on what sizes of squares and strips to make. And it will show you how to go around around your square up to three times. You can go more than that, but your chart gives you the information for up to three of those. And this is the Square and a Square Reference Book Volume 1. It's a must for the Square and a Square system so that you can get the most out of your uh, tool and out of the system so that you can just use the charts and get started just like that. Okay, now this one is our uh, Storm at Sea. And we're going to talk about what you have in your storm at sea. So you see this pink star in here and this black shape that goes around it. Those are probably the two dominant shapes that pop out of your storm at sea. But when you make your storm at sea with your square and a square, and that pattern is here in the back of your uh, option one book here. So this is your option seven diamond, which we have not done that one yet in your option overview book. This one is your option one, your very beginning square in the middle strips on the side and see how these two units just repeat in that row. And we do have a very nice video on with the storm at sea for you to go in and get details on all of these different units. Then in the, in this row that goes on each side, because see the rows just alternate, you have your diamond going the opposite direction. And here is an option two. So square in the middle, sew around it one time, trim it with the 90, sew around it the second time, trim it with the 90, and that's your option two. But what would happen if you put colors um, in the correct motion and you did this twist, this option 16 twist right here? And um, we're going to see if you can zoom in on this little quilt here that I have on this pattern. Let's look at what the rows are on here because you see that extra curliness of the star. You can do that with your option 16 twist. So this row could just be like this one. It's your, your option 7 diamond with an option 1 and those just repeat. And then in the next row you have your vertical diamond shape with this twist block instead of your option two. So you have this and the twist. You have your option seven and the twist. And that is a great way to make this quilt and just beautiful and easy to do. You have trained yourself to look at a quilt like, like this and say, Either number one, I don't have the time to make it. Number two, I don't have the skill level to make it. Um, it's just it's just too hard and too time consuming for uh, for me as a quilter. But once you learn these different units and these different um, options of the square and a square system, you get what we call the square eyes, and you can go in and start looking at every quilt and breaking it down into the system. That's one reason why it is so important for you to go in and make your option overview book so that you can learn the options
lessons. You can get familiar with the different units. It helps you develop your square eyes and then you can start looking at quilts and breaking them down into the square in a square system. So this is option 16, the twist, and I hope you've enjoyed watching it today and that you've learned a lot um, just from this one simple uh, video. Remember, anytime you have any questions um, or you need a quilt adapted over to the square in a square system, just give us a holler. Just send us a, an email or a message or a, a Facebook post. Remember, we have... Um, Facebook videos. We have our premium club, which is um, a private uh, group where we do a lot of teaching in there and go into detail. You get to see every stitch. We do video teaching through email. So make sure you sign up for our email. And um, of course, YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube. We're here to help and we're here to help you learn how to quilt and to become that masterpiecer that you've always wanted to be. It's just one technique away. It's just learning the square and the square system, and you too can be a masterpiecer.